Hi, this is Henning from FlipMormons.com. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can get started with ZBrush very quickly. This is not meant for professionals or for people who want to get into ZBrush from a pipeline perspective. Uh, we, don't want, we don't want hardcore modelers to watch this video and expect to learn a great deal of workflow related tips. What this is meant for is for animators, traditional sculptors, designers, concept artists, and so on. People who want to get into sculpting, but have no interest in the other aspects of 3D, such as, as I mentioned, pipeline, which can be very technical. ZBrush is really hard to get into for a lot of people, as frankly, the interface can be a complete mess. And there are just a lot of settings brushes and so on. It can be very overwhelming. So in this video, we're hoping to give you an introduction to the bare essentials. We're not going to cover the technical aspects. It's simply going to be, this is what you need to get started with sculpting. So I hope you find this useful and let's get started. The first thing we're going to look at is basic interface and navigation. As you can see, there are a lot of buttons and icons and so on and so forth and to be frank it's very overwhelming and it's it's a lot to take in and when i when i'm working in zbrush i'm basically just deleting half or even two-thirds of all these icons as i simply don't need them so let's just get started with some uh, basic sculpting in other three applications you would assume that you could just start to draw out some or start with a swear or something like that and just start sculpting. Uh, what happens now if you try to just to draw on a canvas is you're going to see all these weird squares. In short, we're not going to cover this at all. It's useless, at least in practical terms. You're not going to touch touch this feature ever again. So let's just get rid of it. Hold on, I'll hit Control N to clear the canvas. I'll go into document and no, new document. Uh, we're going to get started with some sculpting. And the way we do this is we go under tool. This is the, this is the interface item you're going to use pretty much all the time. So you can dock it over here by holding down or clicking this little button. You see the circle thing? Click that one and it's docked over. If it docks to the other side, just click. Just make sure that this divider is open, so this palette here is open. So the way we get uh, a model is to clicking on the big icon. And then we, then we get up um, what's called a tool. A tool in ZBrush is not a tool in other applications. A tool in ZBrush is basically whatever they want to call the tool. Uh, it can be a high intensity brush or glow brush, or it can be a 3D mesh which is slightly confusing. In short, we're going to refer to a tool as a 3D tool. These you're not going to touch. You are going to touch these and that's it. So click the square 3D. And if you start to drag it out now, you're going to just drag it out and just start placing them. Again, useless, hit control N to clear it. If you drag it out again, you can see up here we have an edit mode or edit object or hit the T key. You pretty much you can use the hotkey T. And now we have, now we have uh, an object. And if you, the way we rotate pan and navigate around this is first, let's look at rotation. You hold on the right mouse button and you simply drag around here. Let's just go into poly, into polyframe mode. And you can see polyframe mode is basically wireframe mode. You can see it down here or shift F. Really nice. Uh, so rotate, simply hold the right mouse button to pan around. Uh, you hold on the alt and right mouse button and to scale, alt, right mouse button and release the alt key. That one is a little bit hard to do. But if you have trouble with this, just rewind the video and watch it again. So now you have, we have a brush. You can see the brush up here is a standard brush. Um, and we should be ready to sculpt. So let's sculpt. And we get a message saying that we can't sculpt. 
Uh, the reason is because we're still in some kind of initialization mode. So go on our tool, initialize, and here you can adjust something like segments and so on, which can be pretty handy. Most of the time, you're never gonna touch this again, touch this as well. So don't worry about that one. That's just an explanation for why you can't actually sculpt on it. So to get sculpt, start a sculpting, hit make poly mesh 3D. This is can seem like a lot of steps just to get sculpt, start a sculpting. I will show you a more effective way uh, at the end of this video. But for now, we have just have to get started in the beginning. And now you can start sculpt. So some sculpting basics here, or rather technical sculpting basics. The way you just simply sculpt, let's just undo this, control set. The way you get started with sculpting is just draw on the model. It's very easy. And Cybris is very responsive and nice for this kind of stuff. The way you carve into the model is by holding down the Alt key. So you can now see carving in, carving out. And this is going to become very natural after a little while. The way you adjust the brush size is by going under here, draw size, or you can hit the S key. S and you can adjust the brush size here. Uh, if you want to adjust the intensity, go under C, in, oh, C intensity here, and you can make it more intense or less intense. And that's, that's pretty much it for just pure basic sculpting uh, commands. Now we can look at just some basic navigation stuff again. If, let's say your model gets lost and you're all the way down here for some reason, you can hit the F key for focus. And it will just pop up. It's also this one, frame, on the right side here. But you, you pretty much want to get started with hotkeys as soon as possible. Also, if your model is off axis, let's say this is the front view of it, beautiful front. Uh, and you want to, and you want to, and it starts to get off axis like this. Hold down the shift key, and it will snap to every ninety degrees, which is really nice. You're gonna use this very often, so you better get, just get started or get used to it. You also want to model in perspective view. You see this persp uh, button over here? Hit that one for perspective. It's really hard to see on just a simple square. But uh, once you're dealing with a character or a vehicle or something like that, an environment particularly, having perspective on your model is essential. The hotkey is P. Uh, also, as a pro tip, if you're wondering what something is doing, like any command in ZBrush, just hover over it and hold on the control key. So you can now see here, if you're wondering what the floor button is doing, you can get, um, you get information about what it's doing. Next, we're going to look at saving your model. This is something pretty much everybody screws up the first time they use ZBrush, at least if they're on their own and nobody is there to hold their hand. The way you would save, logically save something, at least in formal versions of ZBrush, would be to go to document, save as, and just save, save it. Problem is, this is basically taking a screenshot of your model. It is more complex than that. But just for now, just assume that's taking a screenshot of the model and saving the screenshot. Which means that if you have a beautiful model and you want to keep working on that afterwards, you can't. It's all merged down. So the way we save models in ZBrush is simply by holding, hold, hitting Control S. This is going to say, allow you to save your model. And now you just save it exactly the way you would save it normally. You just give your name and hit Save. Or you can go under File, Save As, and this is this is the same thing. This is Control S is just a hotkey. So that's it for basic navigation and interface. Next up, let's look at some more sculpting uh, related topics, such as brushes, subdivisions, and matcaps. So what we're gonna just be focusing on right now is. Uh, we're just going to be doing some very, very simple sculpting, and I'm going to show you some brushes for it. So let's redo this. Uh, let's just 
get rid of the swear here. Um, come over here and let's go to the swear again and make it a polymesh 3D. So the first thing we're gonna do when we sculpt is by enabling symmetry. You do this by hitting the X key. And you now have beautiful symmetry activated. And you can start sculpting whatever you prefer, like a weird skull dog thingy. But um, you pretty much need brushes at this point because the standard brush is not the most ideal brush for most things. So I'm gonna go through a couple now. The one I'm gonna go, once I'm gonna go through now is clay, clay buildup, the standard brush, trim dynamic, damp standard, the move, and the smooth brush. So let's get started on top, the clay brush. Um, first, let's get started with um, seeing how we can actually access the brushes. There are two main ways of doing this. One, hitting the B key, and we get up all these brushes, hundreds of brushes. It's really intimidating. Or you can click here, simple it. So because Logic have simplified this a little bit for us. So if you want to clay brush, you can either just go here and click it, but to make it easier for you, uh, you can hit B for brush, C for um, clay, and then you see there's a little L next to it. Hitting the L key will now give us the clay brush. B, C, L for clay brush. And the clay brush is really nice for adding volume to a model. It's uh, really nice for adding planes as well to it. And I used this a lot in the beginning of the project. Next one we're gonna look at is the clay buildup. B, so us hit B, C, B. Clay buildup is basically the same as the clay brush, except the fact that it builds up. This will just keep building to infinity, while the, the other brush, the clay brush, will just keep, um, it will just keep the same level at all times. This brush here is really wonderful for adding, uh, so the other one, as so the clay brush, is great for adding volume, and it's, um, it's the brush I use pretty much all the time in the beginning. But as you can see, it has a lot of texture in it. So in order to remove, reduce the texture, we go under alpha, which is just here. And this is where you, you basically set the brush tip. So you can do something like something fancy or pores or something like that. Or you can just set it to off. Setting it to off gives you a really nice and soft brush, which is great for adding volume or any kind of any kind of sculpting really, where you need to define volume. I use this all the time for creating something like hair. Next brush we're gonna look at is the standard brush, B, S, T. The standard brush uh, I use a lot when I need to define features. I use, the, I use the clay brushes to add volume, for instance, adding cheekbones, something like that, or adding, adding lips, noses, and then I use the standard brush to really define the features. And you're going to be using this a fair bit as well. Some people prefer to use this for the entire project, uh, but I personally find it's better to use clay brushes in the beginning. Next one is Trim Dynamic. Trim Dynamic is amazing for adding planes to your model. That's what it's doing. It's, it's great for simplifying your sculpt. It's B, T, D. Some of these are fairly logical. Brush, Trim Dynamic. And it's just, yeah, it makes sense. So to use this, simply sculpt, and it's gonna simplify a model. I use this very often in the beginning of a project, as you really want your model to be, if not planar, you want it to be simple. It's so easy in ZBrush to get, uh, to get into detail too early on and losing the design of it. Next one is the damp standard brush, B, D, S. This is awesome for adding detail to it or adding sharpness, wrinkles, and so on and so forth. If you want some kind of wrinkles or details, this is the brush to use. 
it's one of my absolute favorite brushes to use in Superbrush. It's also great uh, if you hold on the Alt key, which I explained before, is uh, will do the opposite. If you have um, this brush will carve in by default, so if you're holding down the Alt key, it will carve. It will just give you a crease like this. It will carve out rather. So this is super nice for adding adding form as well. The next one is the Move Brush, B M V. You should also just experiment with brushes on your own, as there are a lot of them. And my my cocktail of brushes probably isn't going to fit you perfectly, but it's a good starting point. The Move Brush is great for defining shapes really quickly, changing the silhouette and just changing the signs very quickly, adding, moving big masses or, or big chunks of polygons around. So you can see how quickly you can just change the design of something very quickly. Uh, when I, when I uh, start a project, I'm basically using only clay buildup and, um, and the move brush for the first hours of the model as it's such a good way of adding get, getting the design down. I use the I use the move brush to move big chunks of polys around, and I use the, the clay brush to define it more. The last brush we're gonna look at now is the smooth brush, and this can be accessed by simply holding the shift key. Regardless of which tool you have act or which brush you have acted, um, the, the, the smooth brush is gonna be active by holding on the shift key. So you can very easily just smooth out all your form. You have to be careful with this though, because it's very easy that the model looks too CG if everything is smoothed down. You want to keep some detail in your model. Next thing we're looking at is subdivisions. So you can see right now, if, if I want to add, let, let's say these are eyes now, and I want to add some more detail to them, I can't really do that because I've already reached my max resolution. So the way we do this is we subdivide a model. This simply means that every polygon is going to be split into four new polygons. So let's just hit Control D, or we can go into Geometry, and here's a button called Divide. And you can now see that we get every polygon is split into four subdivisions. You see here one, two, three, four, and this allows us to get four times the detail that we had before. If you want even more detail, simply keep hitting Control D. The problem is after a certain time, uh, you, your computer is going to slow down significantly. Adding poly counts, adding adding, the, adding poly count to your model will really slow down your system once you reach reach about ten million polygons. I find for most systems, about four, five, six million polygons is going to be completely fine. You, you know, you normally don't need that amount amount of details though. So you can see up here, this is the total total point count. And every time we subdivide, this is gonna be multiplied by four. So we can now add some really nice details at this level here. So if you want to lower your subdivision level, you can just go under geometry and just drag the slider down. Or you can use the hotkeys. The hotkey for increasing your subdivision level is D. The hotkey for decreasing it is Shift D. So Shift D to go down. You can just see here as well. This is gonna update when I hit the hotkeys. Shift D to go down and D to go up. And if you want to subdivide it even more, you can just hit Control D. Next thing we're gonna look at is matte caps. By uh, you, you can you can see here it has this red shader on it right now, which I think personally is really ugly. Uh, not just ugly, but it also misrepresents the model. I don't think it actually gives a fair representation of what a model actually looks like. So I, I usually switch it, switch it to something else. I, I have a lot of custom here, uh, custom matcaps here, but um, the one I used most out of the default ones is matcap gray, or one of the green clay ones. They're really nice as well. So this this makes your model simply look nicer. So I would also recommend experimenting with some of these. Some of these are also really nice for uh, just previewing your model. You want to switch materials a fair bit, 
to just see a model under different materials. But as I said, uh, the default red one, I think, um, doesn't doesn't make your model look correct. I think it um, I think it exaggerates form or wrinkles details and such. It makes it look really ugly. So that's it for um, uh, brushes, materials, and basic basic sculpting. Next, we're going to look at Dynamesh. So Dynamesh is one of the coolest additions to ZBrush in the later years. It allows you to basically design without thinking about topology or any kind of technical issues at all. And you can very quickly change your design, add new things, add, remove elements from it. So let's um, let's get started with Dynamesh. Uh, I have um, I have a Polymesh 3D here, which is again just a sphere. It make Polymesh 3D. And let's just give it um, the matte gray. Add some symmetry to it, and sculpt some super quick eyes here, and a nose, and a mouth. So we have a face, beautiful face. And let's say at this point we want to give it some. Uh, we, we want to give it a body as well. So the way you could do this is without Dynamesh, is trying to drag down using the move brush. But you can see very quickly that this fails. The topology is getting stretched, and if you want to add any kind of detail here, it's going to look really ugly and stretched. So the way we do this is we use Dynamesh. Dynamesh can be found again under the tool properties, which as I said before, everything you're going to do regarding sculpting is uh, geometry and Dynamesh. I've also added this button to my, my interface when I'm working. Uh, you can't see it here, but I've just dragged it up as it's used at all the time. So by hitting Dynamesh, visually not a lot has changed, but if you, if you zoom in, and we hit polyframe, you can see that the topology is now nice and even. It's not nice animation topology, but it's good enough for sculpting. So we can now just smooth it out. And we now have a neck. And if you want to add a more bigger torso than this, we can just keep dragging it down. Uh, as you see, it's not interactive, which means that it's not going to remesh on the fly. And I'm just going to show you real quick how to do this. But let's just give him a nice little body first. Use the clay build up to add some volume. And we now at least have the basis for a torso. Just smooth it out a little bit as well. And again, it's really stretched and ugly. So the way we remesh this and make it nice and even is we hold down the control key and we drag outside the model and it's now gonna take a little second or so and you can see it's now remeshed you can uh, you still see the you still see the stretching here but that's it's not actually stretching it's still nice and smooth so you can keep doing this you can keep just using move brush and um and remeshing it but let's say you want to add some arms to this guy here uh, using move brush isn't really going to cut it because at some point you're going to run out of polys or you're going to have to re remesh it all the time and you get these really nice st and stretchy artifacts on it. So a better way to do this is to use another brush. As I said, there are a lot of brushes and this is called Curves Curve Tube. So this is B, C and you can see it here it's W. This is really nice for adding something like limbs. You can just drag it out here and hold. You can, this is the first time you're being introduced to masking. I'm going to cover that later on. But for now, just um, just bear with me for, for now. The way you clear a mask is the exact same way you clear a dynamesh, which can be rather confusing, but it's going to make sense once you get into it. So control drag outside the model. The mask is now cleared and control drag again to compute it or to remesh it and you can now see that it's it becomes one mesh and you can now start to to make these arms 
again, it's fairly brute force, but that's fine. You want to you want to give him some legs as well. Give him some legs. Of course, this will require cleanup, but the point of this is that you're adding clay to it. But just cons just think about this adding clay to your model. You can now just keep going over this and sculpting on top of this. You can add a rib cage. You can add deltoids. And I do apologize for my horrendous sculpt here. This is not a sculpting video as such. This is, as you can see, this is ZBrush, Interaction ZBrush. If you want to see some proper sculpting, we do have some nice sculpting videos at flipnormals.com. But this this ba this could definitely serve as a base for a proper character, even though it's but ugly at this point. You can add some, you can add bony landmarks to it, and you can really start to get sculpted, or to get to get. You can really start to get sculpting on this. But let's say you want to cut some of this away, like you realize that. You don't want these arms here or these legs here They're too long, or you just want to remove them altogether. There are some nice ways to do this. They introduced trim brushes, which are pretty handy. Let's just use trim rectangle. And if you do it, you're now going to see that um, this is going to overwrite Control Shift keys and click. So let's just do that. Control Shift click and Boom, it's gone. It's simply just cutting it away, which is really nice and handy. As you can modify your design very quickly, you can add stuff uh, and you can subtract stuff at will. But the problem with this is that it does not respect symmetry. So the way we have to do, there is a way to do it. So, and the way we do it is by going on a geometry, modify geometry, and mirror and weld. So let's just say we delete this side here, mirror and weld, and we're gonna get it back. I can never, I'm not entirely sure to be perfectly honest, how you can control which side it's mirroring from. So if I, if I want to cut out arm, and it seems like I've cut off the wrong arm here, you see, you see now it's mirroring from left to the right. I just undo it, control set, cut off this arm, and then mirror and weld again. But yeah, this works fairly well. You see it has this mirror line as well in the beginning, uh, in the middle now. You also have insert brushes, which are pretty handy. This, as you see here, insert, and you can now insert a cube into this model. This can also be really nice for adding quick volume to it. Or funky geometric shapes. And boom, we got a cube. You also have some, let's just say they're interesting and it's, it fascinates me that they have insert train brushes here, but they do. You have a lot of these weird brushes, train tracks. By hitting the N key, you get a more additional brushes like train cart brushes. Let's just say these aren't directly practical, but um, it's still nice to show that they exist. Uh, you have tune brushes, where you can add something like eyes to your character. Let's just don't do this. Um, if you hit the M key, you get more options, so you can add legs to your character. Again, this is a little funky, so experiment with this on your own risk. But it's still an interesting designing tool. So you, you have plenty of parts of dragon bones, cylinders, bricks, and so on and so forth. So give this a give this a try. The most ones I find to be most useful are basic primitives. Inserting cylinders, inserting cubes. Uh, let's just say you're not going to insert a train track onto a character too often. And that's it for a dynamish. Next up, we're going to look at um, having multiple subtools in your model. When dealing with um, complex models, or even slightly complex models, there is no way you can do it without actually using subtools. 
a subtool is just another tool or another model you have attached to your original model. So for instance, here we have the main figure, that's one tool. And we have the hair separate one. And again, by tool, I mean just model. Also as a pro tip here, you can use the solo key down in the bottom right corner to solo the selection, just to isolate it. But before we get too far ahead with subtools, let's just show you, let's just go through how we can actually make a subtool. The way I made, for instance, these rock thingies in our hip here was that I, um, I made a square, I turned it into Dynamesh, and I just uh, inserted it into the subtool palette. You find the subtool palette under Tools, Subtools. So I've already made a square here, uh, which I've turned into, into a Polymesh 3D. Now we'll go under your um, subtool palette. And let's just go to the top here. I want this to be on the top and hit insert. Uh, insert is going to insert it uh, below the current subtool. Append is going to insert it on the bottom. So you can now you can now trans you can now move this around in any way you want to. But this is the time where we need to talk about transpose tools as well. But the way you would normally do this in a regular three duplication by moving the scale and rotating it is simply enabling the move tool rotate the scale tool. Zbrush is a little bit of a special case here where you have to use the move scale rotate transpose tools. So the way this works is let's say you want to move it around. You have to drag down the transpose line. You hold down shift key to snap it. And now you use the middle one to, to move it around. And this is fairly unorthodox and it's very confusing in the beginning. You simply have to get used to this. The way you scale it down is the same thing. You hold, you make a transpose line simply by dragging it. And now you, you picked one of the handles on either side, it doesn't matter which. And you simply just scale it down. Personally, I found this to be very cumbersome, but there is literally no other way to do this. So if you want to, to put some kind of rock, let's, let's just put a rock going through her, her shoulder here. Use the move brush to just shape it a little bit. And we now have a beautiful shoulder rock. If you want to duplicate this, this is fairly handy. If you have no subdivision levels, which I don't at this point, you can simply hold down the control key uh, to duplicate it. It'll be still be part of the same subtool, uh, but you can just make a duplicate of it. The thing is though that even though you can't see it, it still created a mask. Again, we haven't got to the masks yet, but we will soon. So if you tr if you try to move some some of these. You can't, you can't move the other ones because it's masked by an invisible mask, which is not necessarily the best decision in the world. But regardless, we just have to, we just have to deal with it and clear the mask. The way we clear the mask again, hold on control key and drag outside and you can now alt them. So we now have, we now have a subtool which we can modify it well. And um, the way, if we want to do something more to it, if we want to duplicate it, we can just hit duplicate and we get a perfect duplicate of it, which you can then move around. We can also delete it. Uh, but please note, as Seabrush can tell us now, that this is, an, this is not an undoable operation. So if you hit OK and you hit undo, it doesn't work. You can't undo deleting a subtool. You can also use uh, get a subtool from um, from a mask. Before getting into that, though, we have to get into masking. So let's get, just get started with this right now. A mask is a way to make sure you can't edit, or you can control which part you can edit. Let's just isolate this by hitting the button down here, 
let's say you want to focus you want to focus only on her on her eye here you can now just hold on a control key which is just a standard brush hold on a control key and just painting around here this is creating a mask for you if you try to sculpt now you can't, can't sculpt on this area you can only sculpt an area surrounding it which is really really handy if you, we can also invert the mask by holding down the control key or click holding the control key and clicking outside and the mask is going to be inverted so this is really handy for instance if you want to move you want to move her, her arm now or her hand you can just you can make a mask by dragging outside here smoothing the mask by holding on the control key this is really nice you want to you want to be able to smooth the mask um, as you want to do this all the time you can see that my poly count is fairly high lower the poly count by going on shift a couple times and we can now smooth it invert the mask by hitting control and click outside and we can now use the rotate tool which works the exact same way as the move and scale tool and we can now change the posture of the hand which is really nice you can also just hit the w key w e and r are hotkeys with this uh, to move it around wonderful wonderful so masking can be done in several ways as i said before you can control click and paint which you can then use as a mask so you can't sculpt in these areas or you can uh, drag from outside cameras to get bigger, bigger areas or the third way which is also really handy is this is really handy if you want to let's say you want to move the arm out here you can't really mask this area because you're going to hit this it's, it's going to be really really hard to get a perfect mask here but this is topology masking and this is one of the reasons why having a nice and even topology can be really nice as you can use topology masking by using one of the transpose lines doesn't matter which you can just hold down control key and dragging on the model and you can now see it's masked based on topology so if you want to move it if you want to like rotate that the arm at the elbow you can do that very easily now but doing a selection like this would be very hard so you can now smooth it a couple times just to get it slightly more even hit the rotate key or hit the rotate tool dragging out a transpose line and rotating it around and boom we have repost for arm and hand in a very short amount of time i had to do this for the character here as uh, at some point the, the pose wasn't working for me so i had to i had to select the top part like this smooth around and then move the entire thing over because this pose was too stiff before so this is very practical um, to polity masking but now that we covered masking in a very very quick manner oh one one more thing before uh, we leave masking the way you clear a mask again is by holding down the control key and dragging outside that's important control key and drag outside but now that we've <laughs> we covered it uh, let's show mesh extraction. This is really handy. Let's say you're doing hair or, so, or something like that. You just want to give her. Actually, let's let's on let's go under. Let's make everything visible, and let's just hide the hair. So you can see what I'm doing. So if you want to if you want to give her hair, you can control paint where you want the hair to be. Let's just do it really quickly here. It's not going to be pretty at all. Isolate again. Use the S key to resize the brush. All right, 
Now we have the hairs, and the area where the hair is going to be selected. We can now go under Subtool, Extract, hit the Extract button, and you can now see what's happening here. We get a really nice, well, helmet based shape where the hair is. Hit Accept, this little button here, and you can get a new subtool. This can be really, really handy for creating something like hair. Clear the mask, and this is what we have. We can smooth it out now, and you can use this as a basis for whatever. You can use this as a basis for hair. You can turn it into a dynamish, create nice flowing hair. Uh, that's actually exactly what I did for this. This is all made from dynamish. And that's it for subtools and uh, masking. So we have now covered the bare essentials of sculpting in ZBrush. And I really hope this is useful for you. But before we end this tutorial, I want to show you some more practical examples of sculpting. The way we've done it so far has been we've created a sphere uh, and we turn it into Polymesh 3D and then turn it into Dynamesh. And these are a lot of steps. So the way you can do this to make this faster is to go under Lightbox, which pops up automatically when you're opening ZBrush. And then you can use one of these presets here. You can use um, um, this one, which is basically just a Dynamesh Sphere, which has already been set up for you. If you use the Move Brush now, I use some different hotkeys though. I don't use the BMV as much. I just use um, the number keys. Uh, but you can now just start sculpting right away. You don't have to set up Dynamesh or anything like that. It's all set up for you. But I, I want to change the material though before we get started with some sculpting to something like this. All right, that's fine. Uh, I also enable perspective and disable the floor as I find that to be annoying. But this is a really good way of starting. You don't you don't have to make a swear turn into polymer mesh and then down mesh. You can just double click this right away. So some basic sculpting theory. You want to get started with the big shapes first. You never ever want to start out with details. You don't define the nostril until you define like the main head shape, for instance, unless you really know what you're doing. Basically, we work from general to specific. So if you're doing a head now, we're doing the basic head shape. Uh, let's just add, give him a neck as well. And this is, you can see it doesn't work for now. I'm using the move brush to quickly define, define the shapes. Uh, Oftentimes I won't I won't necessarily sculpt for like the first twenty minutes. It's all just move brush. Sometimes at least. So defining just a neck, defining a head shape. And keep in mind this is not going to be pretty. This is just to show you the general workflow you might or might not prefer to to use. Uh, just give it just a dynamesh at once because you can see it's getting stretchy. Just a smooth a smooth brush to smooth it out. Uh, and now we have a basic head shape here. Use the clay buildup, but remove the alpha as we talked about before. Hold down the alt key and you can now start to carve in where you want your, your features to be. Or you can just sculpt regularly to define something like a nose. Uh, when I'm sculpting, I'm defining the skeletal landmarks first after the main silhouette. So this goes for cheekbones uh, and the general skull shape, the jaw, uh, and then, then the mouth and so on. But you really don't want to go get into detail at this point here. You want to think about the silhouette and the general this appeal of your design. If your silhouette isn't working um, in an early phase, no amount of detail will save it in the end. So adding some ears here. Uh, again, we can use sculpting, uh, masking for this. You can add a mask for the ear, control click, use the move brush, and just dragging out some nice ears. Get a little bit of a tapering effect going. And ears, hit control, drag outside a model to remesh it. And we now have ears. 
And this is a fairly effective way of working. General to specific, always. I don't use the smooth brush too much though. I try to I try to smooth stuff out using um, the clay brush. For instance, if, if I want to smooth this shape out, I don't necessarily use a smooth brush. I will just go keep going over it with the clay brush. Uh, hold on the Alt key and just go over it. The reason I do this is because you get so much more texture into your form by that way. That way, instead of it just being smooth. So I just keep going over it, um, adding, just thinking about the design. I haven't even added nostrils to this guy yet. And I really won't take this sculpt any further, much further than this. I just want to show you some basic sculpting theory so you won't get all lost. So the brushes I use here, again, move brush to big shapes. Let's just give a little bit of torso for this guy. Move brush for the big shapes. Clay build up to add definition. Like if we want to add some muscles here, Clay build-up is fantastic for that. Or if I want to just, I want to generally just give it some form. Clay build-up is great. Uh, but let's say I want to give this guy some nostrils. Uh, I don't really have the precision with a clay build-up. So this is where the standard brush can come into play. VST. Holding on the Alt key to carving out stuff. And you now have you have more precision with it, which is really nice. You can also smooth out some stuff. So there we go, a couple of minutes and a really crappy sculpt. But I hope that this shows you some bare bare essential for sculpting. General to specific. Worry about the silhouette. Hit the V key to check your silhouette or just switch a color here to pure black. The silhouette needs to work. If it doesn't work, you're in trouble. Uh, use the matcap gray or whatever material you can find. Use clay, the clay brushes to add volume. Use the standard brush to define. And use trim dynamic to simplify. You want to simplify a model. You can always simplify a model and make the design stronger and then adding detail on top of that. And I hope this has been a useful tutorial for you. If you have any questions, which you probably will be, will have, because this is just a very basic tutorial, feel free to contact us. And we have more tutorials and more in-depth sculpting and zebra tutorials on our website, flipnormals.com. So I hope this has been useful and I'll see you around.